Thank you for joining us. It's Monday, the 28th day of November 2011. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We have Dr. Klein Body joining us, who's written a peer-reviewed uh, paper and also published a book on psychopaths in control of corporate systems worldwide and how they destabilize the entire planet. And that dovetails nicely into Gerald Salente, the trends forecaster, incredible breaking news concerning the MF Global and the billions of dollars uh, missing, Corzine, all of it. This is the main advisor, of course, to Obama. That is all coming up tonight. But first, we are loaded for bear when it comes to the news and information. Okay, it's like deja vu. I remember three years ago with the Military Commissions Act and... Uh, other announcements that were made, executive orders, where they came out and said the Pentagon will kill U.S. citizens without trial or arrest. The Pentagon will arrest you, torture you, take you to a gulag. Now, the bill and the company executive orders said in them that U.S. citizens are exempt unless they say you're, quote, fighting the U.S. That means the banksters that run our military and have taken control of our country. And Ron Paul came out and exposed it, and top lawyers on the left and right did, and the ACLU did, and still they said, no, it's ridiculous. And now they're killing, quote, American-born members of Al-Qaeda, no judge, no jury, no trial, setting that precedent, saying, oh, yes, of course. Kind of like they said 10 years ago, the Patriot Act will never be used against citizens, and it can't be. And, of course, I won the Project Censored Award for writing analysis of it. I said, but it says it can't be used on citizens except for Section 802 for any misdemeanor jaywalking, you have no constitution. Now you see cops putting tracker systems on cars without warrants, pulling you over, grabbing your cell phone, downloading the contents, arresting people for videotaping them in public, beating people's heads in, and they're told, oh, we can do this now, the Patriot Act. So it's an even more egregious story that when you know this stuff's happening and they're now trying to codify it in law and expand it and say that Northcom can operate on every street corner in America, the new military system they've set up, that they send out their disinformation operatives in media. Within minutes of our article going up three days ago on Infowars.com about this, there were trolls already on there quoting the section saying we were liars. The section says, oh, you've got all these rights, but then later it says, but we take them away. It's kind of like the UN Declaration of Human Rights. It's got you know 29 great rights and liberties until the last two articles say, unless we want to say null and void. It's the fine print. Now, continuing here, here's the new story, top story tonight. Yes, Americans will be targeted as terrorists under the NDAA. Paul Watson and Alex Jones, Republican Congress Amish, again, Republican Congressman Amish, warns that bill can be applied to U.S. citizens. And he went on telling the Grand Rapids Press, that the bill is written to, quote, be carefully crafted to mislead the public. You've got Ron Paul coming out saying it affects citizens. You've got the ACLU. Uh, you've got Republican Congressman Justin Amish. You've got all of these people coming out. And I'll guarantee you because I haven't even looked, but it's in our other articles. You go read the trolls in here, they're going to be denying this is happening. And you know when trolls show up in minutes with sections of the lengthy bill to deceive people, the bill I have right here, to manipulate them and say, oh, Patriot Act's not going to affect you. Don't listen. Oh, this isn't going to affect you. Oh, we're not listening to you without warrants. Remember Bush five years ago? Now they're just like, yeah, we listen to everything without warrants. They've got Marines running checkpoints in California and Alabama, but it's okay, they're looking for drunks. They've got Army doing it all over the country. I've covered it in the last four years. Homeland Security, as I warned you, and you can see another one of the good congressman's quotes there, hopefully in burgeoning Ron Paul. He says, it's one of the most anti-liberty pieces of legislation of our lifetime. Uh, that puts it lightly, but, but here's what I'm going to explain. People are like, it's Obama, he wants to be a dictator. Obama is a globalist puppet teleprompter reader, just like Bush. Clinton, Bush, Obama, it's all the same. They've been getting the military ready for this. They've been quietly getting them trained with the local police. They've been quietly punching holes in posse comitatus. For the planned economic implosion that Europe is going through, 
being carried out here. Okay, so you can go read our articles. You can go read where we break down where they say citizens are exempt, but then the government strips you of your citizenship extrajudicially. And we've got all the subsections in there. Uh, our article was linked on Drudge this morning. The first article we put out, Senate moves to allow military to intern Americans without trial. Uh, and the uh, commenters just went absolutely wild. And here's the key. This is all happening. The truth will all come out later. The trolls, the paid globalists, the Pentagon operatives on record are in overdrive right now because they're trying to pass this bill this week. Kind of like they passed legislation saying TSA is above the law and can fondle your children's genitals like uh, Sandusky or something, but get away with it. They are trying to codify that NORTHCOM over the U.S., like AFRICOM, CENTCOM, we are a military zone, that they can use them against you. And I've been to the drills with the troops trying to confiscate your guns. You've seen my police state films. And uh, my last police state film, we interviewed the colonel where they admitted they were training in Arcadia, Iowa to take over and confiscate all the guns door to door. And then I was the bad guy for not wanting that. This is for America. Now, here's another one out of the New American magazine. Senate bill to okay indefinite detention of U.S. citizens without charge or trial. And again, we all go over the subsections in here. Now, that said, remember, we were going to burn the American flag, get rid of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, butcher our republic because al-Qaeda was so scary. They had beards, they had brown skin, and even worse, they had turbans on their heads. Didn't matter that al-Qaeda had been created by the CIA or used to go after the Serbs. Didn't matter if they used them against Iran the last few years. Didn't matter if they were funded out of Saudi Arabia by the U.S., Israel, Pakistan, and others, as well as England. Didn't matter. We had to give our rights up because of the evil terrorist. Oh, but we got the internal Homeland Security and MIAC reports where it said it's all about libertarians, gun owners, returning veterans. Then we learned in the New York Times that they've got the Explorer Scouts for at least four years training to take on disgruntled vets and kill them. They even say it in the newspaper like it's good. None of the trainings for Al-Qaeda. Because Al-Qaeda are good little helpers. They take the blame for stuff. They invade countries they're told to. And when they attack the Serbs, the Serbs fight back. They bomb them into submission. They send them in against Gaddafi. They're murdering people in mass still. It's all over the news. Al-Qaeda flags everywhere. The leader of the main council, the leader of the military council, they're all Al-Qaeda. And now they're saying they're going into Syria. Here's the articles. London Telegraph today. So again, they're, oh, the military's taken over, and their training manuals are gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, patriots, people like that, folks that, folks that are informed. And then we go through all this information. Now Al-Qaeda is being given Libya. Now they're going to be given all the other countries. And here's the Infowars.com article. Al-Qaeda terrorist airlifted from Libya to aid Syrian opposition. Weapons and fighters sent to support overthrow of President Assad. Now, continuing here, uh, here's the London Telegraph. Leading Libyan Islamists met Free Syrian Army Opposition Group and buried in the article, they admit all of this, and we have the quotes. Oh, but wait, there's more. Then we have the Digital Journal article, Libyan ex-Islamic terror leader heads Tripoli Military Council. And we've got all the quotes there. The main, as we told you six months ago, I guess now seven, the main group out of the East funded by the West is true Al-Qaeda, who gave interviews, many of them, bragging, yeah, I've killed Americans in Iraq, and I'll go back to killing them as soon as we take this country. This is what is so insane. I, I'm supposedly got to let the TSA fondle my daughters and son because Al-Qaeda's hiding under every table, but then they get the underwear bomber on the plane, the shoe bomber on the plane, all on record. And we're all the Lockheeds hanging out at the Pentagon until they kill the U.S. citizen in a drone attack, but they never hurt citizens, they just kill them. All of this is a total criminal red terror style takeover. And now they're getting ready to use the military on the American people. Absolutely unbelievable. So I want you to get this video, prisonplanet.tv viewers, InfoWars Nightly News subscribers. And I want you to get it once we, it's posted all over the four winds of the web and send it to all your good old boy buddies. They're like, I just don't get how 9-11 could be an inside job. I, I, I just don't get how, you mean the government would attack itself? Yeah, Hitler blew up his own Capitol building to take over after he was already elected president. 
and then he became chancellor and the whole, and combined the two to be Fuhrer. They had an upper and lower system in their parliament. He just became both, chancellor and president. Hitler was elected, but to the lower house. And he blew up the Capitol and said, the commies did it and rounded everybody up. You know, Hitler, you know about that? You know about Gulf of Tonkin and all this? You, you just can't understand it? No, you're too scared to admit it. You know it's true. Okay? You're like, well, then Al-Qaeda's good? No, I didn't say that. I explained their history, where they come from. Brzezinski's written two books about it, bragging how the CIA created it in 79. Wake up. You, do you understand they're going to use this phony threat to fully butcher this country, take your pension funds, everything? It's already beginning. Do you get it? They're not going to stop. They've got re-education camps built. The Emergency Centers Establishment Act, they're now admitting they want to use the military against you. The, the manuals are all for the American people. It's not for Al-Qaeda, even though it's fun to get scared of them. I understand. I know it's fun to get scared. I understand. It's, it's the national pastime. Land of the cowards, home of the slaves. It's still a good country if good people will stand up and say no. All right, let's shift gears to another traitor. I've got the intro here to one of uh, Alvin and Heidi Toffler's books, and we have an article that has links to it. Newt Gingrich, Mr. New World Order. He supported NAFTA. He supported GAD. He supports world government. Uh, you can get all of the uh, quotes from the different books he wrote the intros to, like Future Shock and the... Uh, a whole, let me just read from one of these. The time has come for the next great step forward in American politics. It is not a matter of Democrats versus Republicans or left and right, because you think Newt Gingrich is going to save you. The media said so. A lot of people are like, I like him. It's not a matter of Democrats versus Republicans or left versus right, but something more significant, a clear distinction between rear guard politicians who wish to preserve or restore an unworkable past, like the Second Amendment, family, private property, who are because he's part of this futurist society that calls for all this, who are ready to transition to what we call the third wave information age society. Now, coming up, I'm going to read you quotes out of The Economist magazine where they admit all this technocracy, technology, third wave is communist. But they're like, communism run by mega banks. Now that's great. They take all our money and we're slaves and they live offshore in giant palaces and the paramilitary troops crack our skulls if we get a little uppity. That, that sounds like a good system, doesn't it? And those who are ready to transition to what we call the third wave information age society, as if they create the technology, see? They always say, big government made this, like Al Gore inventing the internet. A new civilization is emerging in our lives, and blind men everywhere are trying to suppress it. Oh, we're blind. No, we see what it is, Newt. We're not blind. This new civilization brings with it new family styles, and you actually read into our reports, it gets into the full statements and full things he's endorsed, and I mean, it's into the family. Changed ways, a new economy, new political conflicts, and altered consciousness, a little new agey stuff on top. Humanity faces a quantum leap forward. This is the meaning of the third wave. Our argument is based on what we call the revolutionary premise. Oh, a little Illuminati. Again, against humanity. Not a revolution against tyranny. It calls for the technocracy. The revolutionary premise liberates our intellect and will, again, uh, of the psychopaths that dominate us. Nationalism's first wave. Get rid of that because you know, we're going to give you something even better. How about banker rule? <laughs> you have to buy the fraud they created. Taking your house without, even when you've, it's paid for. That, 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 that's really, that's great. Nat, Nafta and Gat, that was great too. Nationalism is first wave. <laughs> the globalization of business and finance required by advancing third wave economies routinely punctures the national sovereignty the nationalists hold so dear. Oh, well, I mean, if there was some federation that was pro-Second Amendment, pro-family, wanted to go to space or something, that'd be different if I didn't have to give up my sovereignty. What are the bankers doing in Europe? They've had their operatives get in power, sign the country onto the globalist debt, and now saying, we'll implode you totally if you don't waive all your rights in perpetuity, not even to a central government, but to the private banking dictatorship. Oh, Goldman Sachs has conquered Europe, global government by banks. Oh, the New World Order. I mean, you know, the, the establishment is endorsing Newt Gingrich, just like I did with Romney and the rest of them. Pro-abortion, open borders, gun control, road Obamacare, on and on and on. As our economies are transformed by the third wave, there are, they are 
compelled to surrender part of their sovereignty. What do you always hear all these leaders saying? We've got to give up some of our sovereignty in globalism. Yeah, things have gotten bad under it because you haven't given us enough power, enough bailouts, one more. Let us use the troops in America and Europe. Poets and intellectuals of third wave states seeing the virtues of a borderless world and planetary consciousness. Total new world order, borderless crime syndicates getting away with anything they want. Nations are firewalls against Hitler's, Stalin's, Mao's, and people like that. That's why you want countries, because there's always somewhere to run to. But not with one global standardized, synchronized system. And uh, again, I covered it on the radio yesterday. There's so many books he wrote the forewords to. I'm trying to remember which Alvin and Heidi Toffler uh, won. Uh, he wrote that too. I want to give you the exact one. It's in our article. And, and again, it's got quotes in here, bad-mouthing the founding fathers. You just go, go read go read Watson's uh, article or just type in Newt Genrich forward to Alvin and Heidi Toffler books and uh, you'll get just and his other writings and the Futurist Society he's part of. It's unbelievable. Now, Oh, yeah, he wants socialist health care the whole nine yards. Uh, here's another one. Newt Gingrich also supported federally mandated health care coverage. Uh, this is out of the daily uh, costs. Uh, they're saying, wow, Bill Clinton's coming out praising him. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some, of the, uh, some of the quotes of, of the communitarian. Uh, here's another one. Newt's world order. Gingrich supported GATT, NAFTA, and WTO while in Congress. I mean, you, do you want me to continue uh, with all of these? This is what we're dealing with. This is the type of monster. And, and, and again, you've seen Clinton come out and say, oh, he's got a reasonable thing on open borders. Ladies and gentlemen, we, there are six billion, seven hundred million people that want to come here. And we might even be able to take another five hundred million or so if they don't get on welfare right when they get here. The country is bankrupted, which is what the bankers want. And they want dependent groups. Do you understand this? Anything the globalists are for, I'm against. Gun control, open borders. You heard them. It's about lawlessness. It's not about building up China or Mexico. It's about driving everything down. And by the way, the jobs are even leaving Mexico now to China, where they have people jumping off their roofs, committing suicide so much they've got to put suicide nets around all the buildings. I mean, this is hell on earth, folks. Globalism isn't meant to empower. It's meant to enslave everyone to this globalist system. So I'm going to play you a clip. Which one do we have first, him being endorsed by Clinton or the one with Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First is Pelosi, then, then Bill Clinton endorsing him three days ago. Now, here's Nancy Pelosi with Newt Gingrich when they were trying to pass the carbon tax bill, federal home inspections, shutting down all our major factories, just devastating cutoff of our power. Here's Newt Gingrich endorsing this globalist operation. When China and a hundred plus other third world countries have to make zero cuts on their carbon dioxide, we have, you think America's in a cardiac arrest now, you ain't seen nothing yet. And it shows how I hear all over neocon radio, Neil Borch, Rush Limbaugh, all of them. Newt Gingrich is great. Newt Gingrich is good. Folks, they've known about Gingrich and NAFTA and GATT and, 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 and before that, gun control and weird Illuminati socialism and borderless planets and, and collectivism and the end of nation states and all the weird stuff he writes. And they're like, oh, he's so intellectual. He's so smart. And he sits up there with that smug, you know what, eating grin on his face of the psychopaths. That guy is such an enemy of this country. You, you people think, think you're going to get out of this with Newt Gingrich. I mean, give me Obama. He's horrible. He's evil. He's a teleprompter reader, but he's nothing compared to Gingrich. And Obama's worn out. Obama's exposed. They'll bring in this guy. This is Mr. False Flag right here. He loves to say, are you ready to lose a U.S. city if you don't give up all your rights? He sits there and uses fear. He goes, oh, let me see how dumb the public is. Let me see how I can manipulate him. He is a traitor and an enemy of free humanity. That guy is a Lenin Stalin if he can get away with it. You ought to read his other quotes I covered in the show yesterday about power and seething and his global takeover. He's ex they go, oh, you're a psychopath control freak? We'll, we'll, we'll. But again, he's just a ringer probably for Obama, though. But a lot of people, uh, Joseph Curl at the Washington Times wrote a good article about it. Is Obama trying to lose? You know, you know, maybe they want Newt Gingrich. Maybe they want to give him all this power. All right, I'm going too long here. Let's just go to these uh, uh, clips here of, 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 of the liberals endorsing him. And that me, and they're not even liberals, the fake fascist, you know, the fake liberals who are really fascist, they're all running to support him. That's who they want right now. Is it because he's a ringer or because they know it'll continue the agenda? Now, here is just more of the scumbag Newt Gingrich. 
We don't always see eye to eye, do we, Newt? No, but we do agree our country must take action to address climate change. We need cleaner forms of energy, and we need them fast. If enough of us demand action from our leaders, we can spark the innovation we need. Even Bill Clinton, rather, is pouring in on the praise for Gingrich's thoughtful approach to immigration. Take a listen. He thinks about this stuff all the time. He's articulate, and he tries to think of a conservative version of an idea that will solve a legitimate problem. And it just goes on and on. You can find the full interview. It just goes on and on. You can watch the full ads. That's when they were trying to pass it. I mean, I read that bill. We covered it. The, 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 the climate system wasn't just that. It was a total federal takeover. They don't care. They just signed executive orders and are moving forward. Folks, this country's got cancer. You better wake up. <sighs> Continuing going back to the Middle East, <clears throat> North Africa, neocons planned regime change throughout the Middle East and North Africa 20 years ago. Let me just go back to Gingrich for a minute. Please get this video out. The information you just saw. Please get it out to everybody. Warn these poor, sick, bamboozled people that follow the Republican leadership who demonize Ron Paul. Please, all the fools that worshipped Obama who are now apologizing to me, good. At least you woke up. But we don't have time to be conned again and again. Genrich and Obama, they're all evil. But Genrich is an actual Illuminist operative. I mean, he, that guy is a demon. He had a wife dying of cancer. He came in and talked crap to her and divorced her as she was dying, as she begged him. He's a papa psycho. Those of us that have feeling need to stand up against these dark ones. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Folks, don't, we're going to beat them, though, because we had the jump on them historically. They're going to bring the tyranny in, but that's when the victory starts, because people aren't going to wake up till it gets really bad. You think what you've seen so far is an awakening? This is only the beginning, and you people, I wish we could stop it before it gets 100 times worse, but at least in the darkest hour, we're going to beat these people, when you realize you've got nothing left to lose with them. With them. Whew, man, oh, man. Nothing like a Nelly fat ass psycho demon. I'm sorry. I I, I just mm. I pray to God to bring justice to this man. I'll say that right now. I, I pray to God to bring justice to this person. I don't pray for God to have somebody do something to New Gingrich. I pray that God open up his eyes and make him humble. All right, I'm done talking about that little sissy. All right. Ugh. God, how could you take America and want to destroy it and bring in evil and re-education and break up families? I mean, he's just a scumbag. Another scumbag that Barney Frank stepped down today. Barney Frank. I'm going to talk about him coming up in a moment. Another sack of pus. Man. I get so angry. I, I can hardly continue here. There's a big article breaking down all the admissions they planned all this decades ago. It's all staged. And Al-Qaeda is their excuse to go into the countries when they actually use Al-Qaeda to overthrow them. And hell, land of the slave, home of the cowards. They love it. Okay, continuing here. Uh, we've got a Wesley Clark uh, clip where he was talking about how this was planned a long time ago. And Pakistan's, of course, completely freaking out right now. Before we go to this Wesley Clark clip, they're having their military bases bombed by NATO as the globalists prepare to start war with them. Uh, let's go ahead and go to that uh, clip of Wesley Clark. Here it is. He pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, don't show it to me. He was about to show it to me. He said, because I want to talk about it. And... I, I, I sat on this information I, for a long time, for about six or eight months. I, I was so stunned by this, I couldn't begin to talk about it. And I couldn't believe it would really be true, but that's actually what happened. <clears throat> it's funny, uh, open source general, you should know, that was the former head of a major NATO operation in Serbia, you should know was the Israeli plan in 82 and 84 and adopted as the war plan after 1991. That's how we knew an Obama deception that Libya was next. People were like, how are we always so accurate? Because we've got a stinking roadmap. I mean, it's uh, so you go to a play and, oh, up next is this scene. I mean, it, it's not, 
not rocket science. Uh, let's get into the euro. Uh, one of the big riders over at the um, Financial Times of London has uh, predicted that the eurozone has 10 days left at most if total power isn't given to the banksters who engineered the crisis, of course. And I thought I would just look at this Economist magazine. Rob Jacobson uh, likes to read it, and I like to read it as well. It's kind of the globalist, thinly veiled propaganda. But they're pretty honest in here, and I've got uh, some of the quotes in here uh, in an article titled, Minds Like Machines, Governments by Experts Sound Tempting, Especially in a Crisis. It can work. So they go on to say, it can work. This is really good. And then they go on to say, just like Newt Gingrich always talks about technocracy and technology, that's what Lenin did. Technocracy was once a communist idea. Oh, really? Borderless systems, the end of the family? Really? You mean you mean government forced health care, where they also control health care that Gingrich endorses? You mean it's communist? I thought that was just over in Russia. Technocracy was once a communist idea with the proletariat power. Administration can be left to experts. Technocracy and autocracy have been natural bedfellows. Oh, autocracy. And then and Time Magazine Newsweek, you know, get rid of the Constitution. It's the problem. No, getting rid of the Constitution allowed this to now happen. Technocrats rule big chunks of public life. Central bankers are one example. Oh, look, in the article, it just goes through here. In fact, I've even got it highlighted here in my article, my little copy. Oh, they're now, oh, they do run it. And I've literally seen hundreds of articles last month going, it's a banker coup. It is, they're going to have a world government. They just got the idea. The bankers are going to have a world government, and they're going to have tax enforcers that run your country, and your country will have no sovereignty anymore. It'll all be run by them. They don't add the people that set it all up, the fraud, and put their people in over your government. It's a espionage, infiltrator takeover through financial fraud. But that's okay, because if you got a big heart, you're for it. You're, you're for open borders so the globalists can just get rid of all your countries. If you got a big heart. And it goes on, even highly political governments set up independent or bipartisan panels to make difficult decisions. So we don't need Congress to do those bills anymore. They have a super committee, such as closing military bases. You know, I told you that commission would fail because when it fails, then they just automatically do whatever they want. It's all lies. Such as closing military bases, setting electronic boundaries, or making spending cuts so you can pay all the money to the bankers. They create independent agencies to run everything from health care to education. Oh, yes, they're very independent, filled with the corporate cronies. They create independent agencies to run everything from health care to education. They put outside experts in top jobs, <laughs> yeah, the Goldman Sachs people in every position, such as the economist Larry Summers and the Clinton and Obama administrations. Oh, he's independent, got rid of Glass-Steagall to do all this. I mean, this is like saying they hired, they hired Joseph Goebbels to be independent in the trial and prosecute Hitler. They hired Mrs. Santa Claus to, to prosecute Mr. Claus because she's independent. They hired Santa Claus's son because he has nothing to do with Santa Claus. I mean, just they and, and, and intellectuals think they read the Economist. They they get it. And they, mm, oh God, I'm going to repeat this around at the corporate meeting and sound really smart. I, I I'm so smart. It's just incredible. Okay, I just can't take it anymore. And but we're still the bad people because we predicted everything that happened with precision. It's those crazies that think there's going to be a global government run by international bankers. You know the crazy ones that. Yeah, they're the, aren't they? They're so bad. They're going to cause violence in America. What, whatever, you're the ones murdering people all over the world. Al-Qaeda's being put in power everywhere. And I'm like, hey, these government manuals don't talk about Al-Qaeda. It's all about arresting gun owners. Shut up, traitor. Shut up, anti-American. I thought America was about land and family and guns. I, I wanted to be free. I, I, I just wanted to be left alone. Shut up. Bankers that engage in fraud and take private bank accounts from people and people's houses that are paid for, they're the good men. You're the bad man. Oh, the IMF is drawing up another $500 billion package to save Italy, Spain, and the euro. I probably told you about 100 times after they were done with Iceland, Ireland. I even told you the order because this is a public plan. Greece. That it would then be Italy, Spain, Portugal. Oh, Oh, and of course, then they leveraged the $500 billion to around $10 trillion. They leveraged $1.4 billion into $5 trillion. They're going to leverage all of this. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, they need, uh, then when that implodes, it'll spread to America. And we've got to merge it all. There's got to be one big thing. Oh, let's have the very people that engineered it fix it. And all the media will say, they have fixed it. They have fixed it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, because the trendies read economists. Oh, the bankers are going to take over. No more freedom? You mean we're getting rid of governments and it'll be experts? Well, Oh my God, it's so trendy. You people that said there'd be a dictatorship and the military in the streets and that banks would run everything, you're kooks for being right, but it is trendy. It's good and I love it, but you're also wrong and kooks. This is the mental illness of these people. And, and they'll have their bank accounts taken, everything. Their kids will die of cancer from the vaccines. They'll die early. They love it. It's like, oh my God, I love the system. Because the system smiles at them on TV, the psychopaths and the teleprompter in info babes trained to mimic psychopath liars, they, they sit up there and, oh, tonight we're going to cover how we're going to take your money. Ooh. And it's like, yay, yay. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, how much more crazy does it have to get? Because it's going to get bad, folks. They're going to probably sh start trying to shut the web off, arrest people like me. I mean, who knows how they'll try to set me up. But it doesn't matter. We beat them in the end because we knew the truth. And folks will listen down the road. No amount of brainwashing Prozac is going to stop that. No amount of NFL and this culture of death. None of it will stop it. Now let's move into the type of people we're dealing with here. You know, I asked Paul Watson a month ago to do an article. Uh, I said, look it up. It's five times more likely to abuse children in government care, CPS, than any other group. So they take kids and they just think they're at risk in actuaries. Well, what about an actuary about government being the greatest risk? And Paul sent back emails and said, well, look at all these government documents. You're 17 times more likely to be abused sexually by CPS, five times regular physical. A good, you know, punch in the nose, starving, whatever. And so government is 17 times more likely to abuse children, and they're the ones over children because they like it. The Daily Mail and others are reporting that major TV programs like ESPN had the tapes for 10 years of the, of the wife of this Syracuse coach, assistant coach, saying, yes, I watched him rape little boys. And you know, ESPN said, hey, it's a club. Your kids, you know, we're not releasing this. So the assistant coach went down to Safeway and got a steak. That's how it's seen. The public's our food. Ha, look, they think we care that the, that the, the kids are our food. <laughs> We're psychopath control freak scum. We're a legion of evil. We're not releasing it because that's who we are. We've been given power over this world to carry out evil, especially against children. And we're going to be accomplices, just like Sandusky and everything else. And you know what? America doesn't care either. To take your vaccines and give us your children. He got what he deserved. Victims praise Syracuse for firing sex abuse scandal coach as tapes reveal his wife watch husband molest boys in their home. And ESPN had the tapes and just said, you know what? We're not going to go there because we're part of a team, a team. Watch all those homoerotic shows, all those things they do on, on, uh, on the sports. It's, it's, hey, if that's their thing, whatever, but keep your hands off kids, okay? I know who you are. I know who you are. Dying core, all of it. You're all scum. Continuing here, ESPN reporter explains why the fine tape wasn't released in 2002. Oh, you know, and why not? Dying Core Halliburton run this stuff worldwide, comes out in Congress, nothing's done. Why not? Those of us that don't want to hurt children are the bad people in the land of hell. In an insane culture, those that are good are the bad people. And you've got to learn that. You are the hunted ones. You are the bad people. <sighs> All right, we're going to go to break and come back with the uh, major news reports uh, and a new peer-reviewed paper, The Corporate Psychopath Theory of the Global Financial Crisis. And then Gerald Salente is coming up. Great job to the crew so far. Please, I hope this isn't pearls before swine. Do you realize how powerful this info is? I'll tell you like it is. We can beat these people, but you've got to admit how bad they are.
Okay? It's the only way to beat them. You've got to admit how rotten we've gotten and how pathetic we've gotten if we're ever going to dig out of this. Because these, you think it's bad now. These, these, these teams of psychos are getting ready to do a major blitz on us all. They've got it all lined up already. They've been poisoning our food and water for a while, and we're in a red level emergency. And as the professor is about to tell you, they're even going to destroy their own system. They cannot help it. They're cancer. They're not winning as they run through the body. They're destroying the host. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If uh, you believe in this information, please be sure and support the broadcast by subscribing. The 15-day free trial ends in three days. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Now, Gerald Salente is going to be joining us in the final segment tonight with the latest developments with MF Global now into the multi-billions of account holders who've had their money taken. And there's been a shocking new development even in this crazy case. They're now sending them new account statements and saying, oh, we, we've altered it and taken your money. Incredible. And he's going to show us that coming up, joining us from New York. But look at this article. Weeding out corporate psychopaths, and, and this is something I've researched. You have a certain number of psychopaths in the population, and they tend to kind of be brood mothers over groups of sociopaths, control freaks, uh, sadists, and others who serve them. Uh, there's different uh, varieties uh, under them. And they always build, kind of like spiders building webs, the same type of societies. And they're very scientific about it now. And, and we see them devaluing currency, selling government's derivatives, bankrupting them, uh, Bank of America and others taking houses they don't own knowingly. And then the, the federal and state courts rule, you can do it and you can lie in the mirror's filings. I mean, it's crazy. But Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Nero, the list goes on and on. This is the norm when good people don't recognize it. But this guy has really researched, and I don't want to go over his lengthy bio. He's lived in Australia, Asia, all over the world. Uh, he is uh, Dr. Clive Body, research academic. And of course, he's been at Middlesex University and uh, Lincoln Universities and uh, just involved in a lot of deep research into toxic leadership, uh, corporate psychopaths, and more, and how that influences organizational outcomes. And, and just amazing insight. So I'm going to try to give him the floor and break down his uh, peer-reviewed uh, paper titled The Corporate Psychopath's Theory of the Global Financial Crisis. Details of how highly placed psychopaths in the banking sector may have nearly brought down the world economic system through their inherent inability to care about the consequences of their actions. Actually, a lot of them have a thrill. Oh, look at the beautiful colors of blood, basically. Um, and, it's a, and, and for my research in their own documents, it's actually a plan, order out of chaos. They wreck it and pose as saviors and use the corporate whore media to never point that out. But uh, again, a, a professor, uh, Dr. Clive uh, Body joins us. Sir, thank you for coming on with us. Where are you exactly joining us from Skype tonight? Well, I'm, uh, at the moment, I'm based in Cambridge in the UK, uh, so I'm, I'm at home. Well, well, it's uh, awesome to have you here with us. Okay, you've got the floor. You got ten minutes to explain to people your paper, the theory. Hopefully, it's online so people can read it because it doesn't sound like a theory to me. The sun comes up in the morning, and, and uh, you know that's uh, basically what uh, what your basic thesis says to me. Well, so far it's just the theory. Um, I've researched the effects of corporate psychopaths on various aspects of managerial behavior and everything points in the same direction, more or less. So I've looked at conflict and bullying, uh, corporate social responsibility, job satisfaction, um, workload, withdrawal from the organization, organizational constraints and productivity, 
and organisational commitment to employees, and corporate psychopaths have a sig statistical significant and quite major effect on in all those areas, some more than others. Uh, and for example, in my research, I estimate that about a quarter of all bullying is accounted for by the presence of corporate psychopaths, who only represent, as you've just said, 1% of the population. So the theory is, if you move on from the research that we have done, that there are a number of theories about what they might also be doing that uh, is relevant to today's economic environment. Uh, there's three related theories in this respect. There's a theory that they are attracted to certain organizations more than others because they want the power and money and prestige that are only to be found in those organizations. And obviously, the financial services sector is one of those organizations where relatively large financial rewards can Sure, be police, military, uh, anything that has uh, university heads carrying out their pedophile operations, they want, they want that power because it also do, uh, gives them protection, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, those are different types of psychopaths I think you're talking about. My, my interest is primarily, primarily in those who are after money and power rather than control of other people and, and violence, which are might be attracted to different kinds of organizations. Sure, but p the power to tax, the power to devalue currency, that's one of the most ultimate forms of violence. But, I, well, I, yeah. but you're the expert in this area, but please continue. Yeah, at the same time as that, there's the theory that uh, as organizations have become less and less bureaucratic, less hierarchical, much more influenced by constant change and turnover of personnel, the opportunities for psychopaths to enter those organizations and more importantly, to remain unnoticed because people don't really get to know each other over long periods of time anymore in the workplace, gives them the opportunity to enter, not become noticed, and slowly to move up the corporate hierarchy until they attain the positions of power and influence that they're after. And then, after that, they work for, to their own advantage, not to the advantage of the company that employs them. And that's the key difference, I think, between them and normal employees or the rest of it. Um, so you're saying so they'll gut the company in a year just so they get a $50 million bonus, even though it destroys even the long-term profitability? Well, they would if they had the chance, yeah. I think that's pretty certain. Please continue then. Yeah. Um, and so another thing that people that sort of struggle with is because they're 1% of the population, um, People think they can't have much influence. But if you imagine a corporate hierarchical structure, the more up the hierarchy they go, and there is weak evidence to show that they're more to be found at the top of organizations than at the bottom. Uh, so the higher up they go, the more influence they have to those around them. And they have a, a toxic influence by example. Um, so people follow their their ethics, they follow their style, they follow, and they, they affect the corporate culture of the whole organization in, in an ethically downwards uh, direction, uh, leading to consequences uh, that people do things when they are around the psychopath that they wouldn't normally do. For example, engaged in, engaging in bullying behavior, engaging in ethically questionable financial misstatements or misrepresentations, uh, and not uh, drawing a line or, or whistleblowing when they could uh, have the opportunity to do so. Wow. Uh, now, now uh, where can we read your paper? Is it publicly uh, out there on the web? Uh, no, the, it was published in the Journal of Business Ethics, which is a, a leading business and ethics journal. And it's also been published in, in a book that came out of mine called um, Corporate Psychopaths, Organizational Destroyers. And I think that's available through most uh, website bookshops. Oh, good. I want to I want to read that because from my research, uh, just in the field, studying you know, different types of you know, it, psychopaths, you know, the really high, high IQ ones, they know how to recruit different types of people, the mercenary class, sociopaths, other psychopaths, though sometimes they're intimidated by those and worried. And you know, it's kind of like Stalin emptying out all the prisons with the murderers and rapists and making them the heads of his secret police regionally uh, because he knew they'd get the job done. I mean, I think throughout history, we really see manifestations of this over and over again. 
Well, yeah, as you say, I think there, there are certain characters in history who certainly seem to pronounce psychopathic tendencies. And if, I mean, the examples we've given of people who have killed or uh, millions of civilians without blinking an eyelid or losing a night's sleep over it. Um, we've been slow to realize, or academia and psychologists have been slow to realize that not all psychopaths are, are those violent criminal psychopaths. And some prefer the much more easy life of a corporate um, executive, where they can, even if they're found out uh, in terms of their fraudulent or embezzling or misrepresentation activities, the, 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 the punishments they get are relatively light and easy compared to um, their more cr criminal brethren. Is the global corporate structure uh, from your research, I mean, are they aware of this? I mean, hopefully your book, or, because or, from my research, it's like there's mega psychopath families that actually interbreed and, and you know, have those ruthless tendencies. That may not be all pure psychopaths, but, you know, it, it, have those tendencies and that they know they're actually trying to recruit the ruthless person. But I think what you're getting at, I've read your book yet, I read the articles about it, is that they're even destabilizing the power structure's own systems and combines and companies because they're not company men. Uh, so in a way, it's almost like sabotaging the globalist-owned system. Well, yeah, I mean, in many ways, they are the unacceptable face of capitalism. They, they go too far in the pursuit of their own self-interest to the extent of destroying the, uh, the very environment that, that, that's given them the opportunity in the first place. So I, I, I think it's in everybody's interest from the top right to the bottom, from the bottom right to the top, I should say. Uh, to identify and monitor these people to make sure the damage they do is, isn't on too wide a scale to, to put right. Dr. Clive Body is our guest. Uh, what got you interested in this? I mean, how long have you been researching this? And, and, and if you were talking to a group of academics and had, you know, three, four minutes to kind of break down the core, core research on psychopaths in, in corporate world? Well, I've been researching it uh, since 2005 now at, at Curtin University in Australia and then back here in uh, Nottingham, University, Nottingham Business School in the UK, which I've just left, uh, maybe just because it's too far away from where I live. Um, the, the key thing about psychopaths is to realise is they've got absolutely no conscience and therefore the, the, there isn't a good side of them to appeal to, there isn't a moral side of them to appeal to they'll do whatever it takes to get what they want. So to, totally ruthless, totally without emotion, totally self-centered. Um, and that means they'll commit things like, well, the theory is they'll commit things like fraud and embezzlement uh, whenever they get the chance. But there's, uh, again, like the corporate psychopaths theory of the global financial crisis, the, the link between fraud and psychopaths isn't proven yet. It's just the theory that it's a very logical... But there is a, almost a fearlessness associated, because it's not just they don't care, they're also pretty reckless sometimes. Yeah, they have a, a relative lack of... Well, because they have a relative lack of emotion, they have therefore a relative lack of fear. Uh, and, for example, if you caught them lying, they wouldn't be flustered or bothered by it. They'd just carry on uh, with another lie that covers up the first one. Uh, whereas you or I would uh, be embarrassed and stumble over our words and and uh, things like that. Well, you know, Doc, I've got some research just from watching people and studying history. Um, it's not just that, quote, good people are goody two-shoes and have this conscience and feel bad. It's that it's almost, to use a gross analogy, like kids peeing in the public pool. At a certain point, if everybody's peeing in the pool, it makes the pool not a good place to swim anymore. And so it's, it's just a basic human instinct to build up the tribe, build up civilization. It's normal, good, decent people who are honorable that help build civilization. And that it's, it's the parasite psychopaths and their minions, uh, control freaks and others, that always kind of make up their legions who are the bane of humanity. And uh, I think for human development, the key is to recognize the psychopath and their, uh, their henchmen, the sociopaths. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, yeah, you, you've, you've sort of portrayed them as monsters, and in many ways they are. But the key thing about them is when you meet them, they come across as almost better than everybody else. More charming, more sophisticated, more presentable, um, 
and so they they make you feel as if you've just met your next best friend and therefore they, they wheedle their way into your lives and by the time that you realize who they really are the destruction has already been done and you've been and you're usually the worse off for it either financially or emotionally or both so there's the silver tongue associated with the psychopath with corporate psychopaths certainly and to some extent with criminal psychopaths as well because uh, Robert Hairswick shows, shows they can they can talk their way out of uh, when they're talking to parole boards, for example. They can present a very as if they're a very reformed character. You now they're born again Christians, or they're uh, discovered spirituality, or they've turned a new leaf. They've seen the error of their ways, and they can, they'll say whatever they can or whatever they need to to get themselves out of the pickle that they're in at that particular time. Um, so they'll tell you what you want to hear. Well, my concern is the reign of the psychopath, and we've seen it throughout history, uh, obviously Hitler and things like that, is about to be upon us because these corporate psychopaths have now gotten their people in almost every global management position. And that's how they can just now basically do anything. And, and civilization is about to basically, if this whole new world order, as they call it, is built, we're, and, I, and I know you've managed major uh, market research growth companies around the world. You've probably run into quite a few of them. We're about to experience the high-tech uh, world of the psychopath that people don't wake up to this danger. Uh, wh how do people, again, find your book? Give us the title and any other uh, tidbits in closing you'd like to give us. Yeah, the, the book is, is this one. It's called Corporate Psychopaths, Organizational Destroyers. Uh, you can find it on uh, most e-commerce sites, I think, or uh, Amazon, for example. Um, it's an academic book, so it's um, published by Palgrave Macmillan, and, or you could find it in academic bookshops. It, it's not written in a popular style, I should uh, hasten to add. It, it's, it presents the research that's been done about corporate psychopaths and the effect that they have on various uh, influences like corporate social responsibility, bullying, um, productivity, etc. Amazing. Uh, well, I, I notice your book's getting some attention. Your paper's getting a lot of attention. I think that's really great uh, because we need to have a discussion about this. From your research, so it's about 1% of the population's a, a psychopath? Yeah, that's, I'm taking Hare's figure. I mean, Hare, Robert Hare is uh, the authority on... on yeah. What good. about sociopaths? One out of 20? I don't know enough about that to be honest to, to, to give a figure. What about, what about artificial psychopaths and sociopaths? Because this culture run by psychopaths, and let's just admit it pretty much is, is artificially tortures good, secret arrest, war, blood, death, the, the simulated murders. I mean, they are artificially, the social engineers, or have you got into that trying to basically turn us, uh, at, at least at a certain level, into them? You mean through things like desensitization? Yeah. Well, just, I mean, the Roman gladiatorial events, you might be, be, be killed in it the next week, but you'd still cheer as your neighbor was torn in half. Uh, I mean, clearly, social engineers for thousands of years have understood that. And I, and I just see the public, a larger percentage, turning into, getting large stripes down their backs, not even so much of, 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 of you know, psychopathic behavior, but more sadistic. Uh, yes. Um, so, was, was there a question? Sorry. Well, no, I'm just asking you if you've, uh, I hope you do more research into how psychopaths actually build structures. Because you were talking about how they influence, from my research, they actually, they actually are experts, the high-functioning ones, at, at, at putting different types into their organizations. Legions I, of psychopaths. Well, I think they surround themselves with Yes, man, yeah, so Machiavellians maybe, or narcissists, people who have a vested interest in rising um, alongside the corporate psychopath without directly challenging them. So they'll go along for the ride in order to gain the financial benefits that go with that. So they, they, they create a nexus of support within organizations, of a little political in-group that they take with them, sometimes wherever they go, but if they we insist on taking their own uh, team with them, for example. Uh, because they know they can control and manipulate those people and get them to do what they want them to do. Amazing. All right, Doc, incredible work. Look forward to speaking to you in the future. Okay, you're welcome. Wow. Well, that uh, powerful interview. And I.
I'm glad that Rob Dew saw this article uh, in the Star and, and, and several others uh, because we're going to go to break and come back with Gerald Salente and see what the psychopaths have done to him. Just incredible. So we're going to go to break here at InfoWars Nightly News and uh, come right back with Gerald Salente and MF Global, the CME Group, and a lot more. Stay with us. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. It's InfoWars Nightly News, Monday, the 28th day of November 2011, and we're in our final segment here tonight. And uh, rarely would I have a guest on the radio show and then have him back on the TV, but Gerald Salente got breaking news towards the end of the interview today at the end of the radio show that is just amazing. A month in to MF Global and Corzine, uh, now saying that three billion is missing. First it was 600 million. Uh, and saying that they wouldn't tell the public where the money had gone, the trustees knew, but sorry, you can't be told, he got in the mail the letters from them explaining that there'd been a statement correction. And this is a new form from my research of a run on the bank. It's an internal run on the bank, or almost what you'd call a bank holiday, where they just for a month said, we don't know what's going on, just wait, it'll be all right. Some of you won't get your money, some will. Oh, now there's a correction. Something different happened in your account. Unbelievable. And I've got Reuters articles, you name it, where this is shaking the commodities market, not just here, but worldwide, and shaking other markets as people say, wait a minute, is anything safe with these people? So joining us for the next 15 minutes is top trends forecaster from the Trends Journal, Gerald Salente. Gerald, thanks for being with us. Oh, my pleasure, Alex, as always. Well, this is big breaking news. I mean, you're now being given a new flim-flam story. For almost a month, you were told that uh, just don't worry about it. Now they've got a story for you because the MF Global thing won't go away. Break it down for laymen like myself and people out there. What happened to you and the new information? Yes, and I'm doing this also so people realize that anything they're told by any bank, brokerage, insurance company, the government, anything that they're told, it's not worth the paper it's printed on. And so here's what happened with me with MF Global. This past April, I bought a gold, I bought gold contracts for December delivery. That meant in April, gold was selling for $1,443 an ounce when I bought it. I bought it at that price with the expectation, as everybody that's been listening to me knows, that the price was going to go up. So this is a good way for me to buy it. I make the agreement, we have a contract, I put down a deposit, and then when December comes, which is just a couple of days away, I get delivery of my gold. That's the story and that's the way it used to work. As you mentioned, the entire commodities market and options market is shaking at its foundation. No one has any trust in them anymore. Why? Here's why. The money was emptied out of my account. I had what they call a segregated account. It's in violation of the law to go in and steal money out of people's accounts. It breaks the sacred trust of the commodities future trading that has been going on for centuries. It's never been done before. When it has been done, it's been corrected by the exchange, which they're not doing now, the CME group, formerly the commodities, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Although they said they guarantee it, 
We sent out a video with the words from Terrence Duffy, the CEO. You had it posted there on your site saying that they're the guarantors and they guarantee, they're guaranteeing nothing. So now they empty out my account. Now, actually on November 30th, I am permitted now to take delivery of my gold contract. So I get on the phone, they changed my account, they shifted it over to a new brokerage. As I've been telling people, the former broker I used to have was Lind Waldock. They were bought out by MF Global. As this statement shows that I have in my hand, I have December 11th Comex Gold at $1,443 an ounce. So I'm going to send the check now for the gold. I no longer have that money in my account, by the way, and I had six figures in there. They stole it. They took it out of there. It's gone. Oh, it's not really gone. It's in the hands of a trustee. Oh, yeah, you know, a trustee. The and trustee. now they're saying even though the money you put up uh, because you, uh, to buy the gold that you purchased in the futures market, they're saying that's gone, but that's they're, gone. Sa they're saying, but on top of us taking your money, send us another check and then maybe you'll get gold at current prices. Right. So now if I want that December gold that I agreed to buy, so how many was that? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, all of these statements that mm -hmm. I got. That says 1,443? No, Salenti, you're out of your mind. You're stupid. I got one from R.J. O'Brien, the new brokerage firm that's holding my account. It's not 1,443, imbecile. All those other, other statements? No, no. It's $1,765.10. $1 because it's a corrected statement. Oh. All those other ones I've been getting, those were uncorrected statements. They're only for jerks and morons. Wait, wait, they so let me get this straight. Oh, oh, now I understand. You got it? Now I understand Reuters and, and, all, and Bloomberg and all of them admitting that this is unprecedented theft. They were all wrong. Don't worry about the three billion that was 600 million. Don't worry about it. Corzine is a genius. It was a corrected statement. That's why they took all the money out of your account. Exactly. It's a corrected statement. You can't make this crap up. You cannot make this up and you can't get away with it. And you're you or you or you or you or anybody listening out there. You got to be a member of the White Shoe Boys Club to get away with it. You got to be a member of the Goldman Sachs gang, the Citigroup criminals. You know, those people, they never do anything wrong. You know, all those, those foreclosures that they signed, they didn't do it. They had a robo signer doing it. Those statements that I was getting, that was my imagination. Here's the corrected statement. Get it this straight, everybody. They're going to rob you like they robbed me, like they robbed your house, like they're robbing pension programs and benefits. They're cleaning you out, and the game is rigged. You know, we're the only country, the only country in the so-called so civilized world that has judges that come from political parties. You get it? Political parties. The Gambinos, the Bananos, Dutch Schultz, Meyer Lansky, judge this and that. They're all members of the party. It's the Communist Party, but no, no, no. We gotta give it its right name. Communists, they had the illusion that everybody shared. Let's call this what it is. Fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. The judges are in cahoots with the crooks. They stole my money and 30,000 plus other people's. And they're going to get yours. This whole thing is collapsing. But don't worry, don't worry. When you have nothing left, 
you'll get a corrected statement. Oh. And everything will be fine. Well, well, let's expand on that. It came out even on CNN that Bank of America was taking houses that had been bought in cash a decade before that they never even owned a piece of with fraudulent derivatives, and they still go and take them, uh, and, and, and the courts let them. And it's come out that the state courts and federal courts are ruling, hey, you know what? It's okay you robo-signed on hundreds of thousands. It's okay you went into court and took houses that you didn't owe that weren't even in trouble. Uh, and it's okay that you sold to each other the same house 10, 15, 20 times in derivatives. It's now reached total la-la land, and they've done this to you. Gerald, where do you go from here, A, and then B, what effects do you think this is going to have on global markets? I mean, doesn't this signify a new level uh, in fraud and corruption? Yes, it couldn't be clearer. A corrected statement. It's going to happen in every instance that you could think of. Where am I going? There's not a lot of places to go. By the time I sue and all of that, you know, what am I going to collect when I'm dead and get pennies on the dollar? What I'm saying, Alex, is that the entire system is collapsing. I have two beliefs as to why this hasn't been fixed. And again, very important, the entire global commodities and option markets are being destroyed. Only a complete imbecile would ever trade with any of these people again. It, it, remember, this is unprecedented. This has never happened before in the history of commodities future trading. Never, 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 ever. And I'm saying that because, number one, either Terry Duffy, the head of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, or is it the Chicago Mafia Enterprise, again, you have that videotape that we sent you of him saying that they are the guarantors, that a customer's never lost money. Hey, Terry boy, I've lost a bundle, and you keep taking more from me. So who's going to trust these guys? Number one, so the whole system's collapsing. That's happening now over in the commodities sector. Bam, you see what's going on over there in Europe? They just downgraded Belgians' creditworthiness. You know why? Because they're bailing out a big bank, Dexia, French-Belgian bank. Another group, and again, I got to use the right language here, excuse me. Another loan shock. It's costing the Belgian people 15% of their GDP to bail this bank out. They don't have the money. There's no money out there. So the CME group either doesn't have the 100 billion that they said that they have as collateral because they can't come up with, at first it was 700 million, or they don't have the gold. And I well, Gerald, believe it's a combination of the two. Exactly, but, but Gerald, and you predicted this, many others did in the last year that they were gonna have, have problems, but the fact that the system wouldn't even come up with it, as you pointed, there's been problems before, but the, but the system always pays the money out because it will destroy the confidence. You, I mean, you talked last week with me about the tens of billions of dollars that they admit in the news uh, of, of people pulling out and farmers pulling out. So this is definitely costing these people a lot of money. And I think loan sharks is too nice a term. You bail out the bankers themselves and then they take your country over because you've signed on to their debt or they just come in and buy up brokerage firms and then take the money out. Uh, I mean, that's worse than loan sharking. That, I mean, that, I mean that's, that, that's mean to loan sharks. This is just out-and-out -out robbery, but because it's done, like you said, in a white shoe boy way of, of, of through processes and, 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 and stress tests and, oh, the, you know, the, the enlightened ones, it's okay somehow. Oh, yeah, look, I called the broker. So what kind of baloney is this? Oh, you don't understand what happened. I said, no, you don't understand. Let me make this really clear. I have a contract that says I bought this stuff at $1,443 an ounce. And you send me this crap? What am I, a moron? You don't tell it to your kid. Don't tell it to me.
I want to talk to your boss. Well, you're going to hear the same thing. Where am I going to hear another lie? Another lie? Where's, where's the prostitutes? Where's the fourth estate? They're pleading the fifth. Nobody will go after the CME group. Oh, by the way, check it out, Alex. Check it out. In Illinois, you know, that wonderful state where the Chicago machine is there? The CME group. You can't make this stuff up. They're asking for a $100 million tax break because of all the jobs that they create. And what a wonderful organization it is. And now those politicians are going to be voting on it in a few days. So after they take your money, then they take the taxpayers' money and give it to Terry Duffy and the Chicago Mafia Enterprise. Incredible. Gerald, uh, again, they're now saying it's over $3 million. It, it, it was, you know, $600 million, $1.2, billion, growing, growing, growing. Uh, and it does signal a new time when they just now say, well, we've corrected your account. At first they admitted, yeah, we took it, we were going to find it. Now it's like, we found it. It was a little exchange problem, all because Corzine bet 40 to 1 on those European bonds. Uh, but that's okay, because we can just take Salente's money. I mean, they are biting off more than they can chew. They are going a, a, a mile too far. And, and, and we've only got a few minutes left with you, because uh, I know you have another interview coming up uh, with a reporter. But I want to, in a moment, play the clip of Duffy that you're talking about that we put in an Infowars.com article, because you were kind enough to send us this clip of him saying, you know, we have these trillions of dollars of backup, and this could never happen. We have all these assets, and they can't even pay back $3 billion in people's private accounts they took, where you put it in to buy it, and they say, sorry, and then have the nerve to send you a letter saying, now give us money, we'll give you that gold you already paid for. It's like you pay for a car, and, and you go, can I have the keys? And they go, oh, well, we're keeping that, but you can buy the Mercedes again. Or, or you can buy the you know the Ford again, and, and then they have the prostitutes and, and trolls say, well, that's what you get when you when you buy something in the market. You know, that's not fraud because Corzine did it, and he's one of the anointed ones. But now here's a letter I got. Hello, I heard Alex talking about countries printing notes to keep pace with hyperinflation, and I actually researched this. The guy's right. Uh, Enclosed is the largest note in existence, and it's true. The Zimbabwe $100 trillion note, in fact, I meant to order one of these, but a listener sent us one, valued at about $5. Enjoy. And so a uh, nice uh, listener, uh, a PrisonPlanet.tv member, sent us that. And uh, here it says, $100 trillion Zimbabwe. And this is the largest bill in existence. Now, in other countries, it's not been as bad, but it's still devastating. And this is where we're moving. So they're going to rob us that way. But is this not, Gerald, like a bank holiday? Because for a month, they just say, Gerald, we don't know where your money is, but we'll figure it out. And yeah, we may give you some of your money back, or maybe none. And you know, farmers are losing 100000 30000 They're in the news. Uh, it's not just gold futures, it's corn, it's everything. And now they just gonna, you know what, we're just gonna issue them statements saying it's corrected. But not only are they gonna keep all your money you put in when you made the bet right with your money, your purchase, now they're gonna send you another bill saying pay for it again. So in closing, what's this gonna do to the markets? What are we gonna look like in six months? What does this signify and what do you think about the $100 trillion situation? Because when is that real bank holiday going to come? When they close the banks for a week or maybe a month and then they tell you, oh, by the way, the dollar has been cut in half again. We're not just going to slowly devalue it. And that's the way it is, suckers. Well, again, they're not only telling me that I have to buy it again. They just upped the price. Wow. They upped the price. We're talking for 100 ounces over $30,000. You know, and I work hard for my money. I'm no silver, you know, spoon guy. So it's you know, triple. I, they they st they took the first money, then they sent you a bill for it at a higher price than the contract yeah. you signed. Yeah. So where is it going? Your money, as far as I'm concerned, isn't safe with anybody. I don't care who the name is. And look at the history. You know, the Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob, the Lehman Boys. How many more times do you have to see yourself getting screwed before you know you're getting screwed? Final point. And again, I played it safe, and I got shafted. Yeah, you were getting physical I believe, delivery. I believe, yes, I believe that the crash is going to come sometime early in 2012. After they sucker everybody into spending the money that they don't have, 
on the Christmas holidays. I believe it with all my heart because I believed it was going to happen under Obama in 2009. And then I was doing research and I saw Corzine, uh, Joe Biden talking to Corzine, telling him that they were thinking of a bank holiday in 2009. It's there for everybody to watch. Go to YouTube. Biden, Corzine, it's there. And I believe that with Europe unraveling the way it is, with the problems that China is going to be facing, with the intractable problems we have in the United States, they're not going to be able to solve these problems, and they're not going to be able to cover it up anymore. The MF Global is a harbinger, and everybody should understand it. This is not an isolated incident. How many more do you have to back up to see it happen? Remember Washington Mutual. How about Wachovia? Remember IndyMac. You go around the world, Anglo-Irish, Dexia, one after another. And let's go back and briefly. Come and go. Let's go back briefly because I know you got to go here. Gerald, two weeks ago you said that when they first took the money out of your account that was in there for months, paid for, delivery, you bought it at 1400 went up to 17 you did great, made a good decision, it's paid for, they take it, and without even telling you your money's gone, they call up and go, there's no money now in your position. You know, they're claiming you basically got to buy this. And I think that's the next shoe. They're not only saying, okay, we got it for your delivery. They're now probably going to sue you and say, yeah, we took your money. Now you got to buy it, not just for what your contract said, but for even more. No, they won't be able to do that. What they do do is they just close your positions out, as they did with my other ones, because I wouldn't come up with another margin call. So they, they emptied out my account, said I had no money in it, and then closed out my other positions. And I had enough money left to cover this one, just the margin. So no, they just close you out. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, and they're gonna start new wars as a diversion. They're gonna try anything. Oh yeah. I just- Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. I look, wanna play this look, clip I mean, and look then- how they kept, Look at that Bloomberg, rolled out the other one. You know, the, the guy, you know, he had, you know, he had pebbles and, and rocks and, and wire, and he was going to blow up the Empire State Building, you know. I mean, come on, they're going to come up with anything. Mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, these criminals have learned over the centuries how to steal money by hyperinflation. They've learned how to have bank holidays, and they've also learned how to have a process. As long as it's a robo-signer, they can take your house that's paid for, even though they never even had the deed. As long as they, they claim that some process screwed up. And now, after a month of not knowing where the now $3 billion is, they're saying, hey, it's a corrected statement. Okay? Doesn't matter you have contracts. Doesn't matter we took your money. That's it. We, we corrected it. It's like walking up and blowing somebody's brains out for no reason and saying, I corrected you. Again, it's this mind game they're playing. And we've got this Terrence Duffy, the head of the Chicago Mercantile, now the CMT, and his group's been criticizing Salente and others. How dare you conspiracy theorists not like what's happening? I mean, they'll use the, cons I mean, they'll walk up and punch you right in the nose, break your nose and go, if you don't like that, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you don't like being drugged behind a truck, you're a conspiracy theorist. It's now reached Alice in Wonderland proportions. And here's the clip that Gerald sent us last week that we put in an InfoWars article that got a lot of attention. Here he is, and we'll get Gerald's comment on this in closing. Just tell everybody, don't worry, it's all 100% backed, except if we have change your statement, and then everything's okay. Here's that clip. Last year, we traded 2.6 billion contracts, representing an underlying value of more than $800 trillion. And since we are the guarantor of every transaction that happens in our markets, we have to guarantee the performance of each and every one of these contracts, which means facilitating the transfer of $800 trillion of risk. To do this, we hold more than $100 billion of collateral to support the transactions that are being done in our markets. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Gerald, uh, in closing two minutes, break down what we just saw there. I mean, you look at that video, they look like something out of a Goodfellas uh, TV show or something. I mean, they just drip with, with arrogance, with uh, sliminess. I mean, it is incredible. And my God, if they're getting away with this now, what's next, Gerald? Again, you know, I don't speak the King's English, but I could understand that, you know. What, what am I missing here? 
We guarantee, we're the guarantors. We guarantee all the transactions. We have $100 billion in collateral to make sure everything goes well. Where's the money? Where's the dough? How come you stole my money, Duffy? Where's the money you said you were going to guarantee? I traded with you in good faith. That's over a year ago they played that, 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 that clip. We said that. How come nobody's holding their feet to the fire? You know why? It's the same kind of crap with that pig, Pike, who is walking blah, 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 spraying little kids sitting down with pepper spray. What, do you need a jury to find out if the guy is pepper spraying innocent people? Oh, no. Uh, I'm the chancellor. We're going to have a hearing on this in 90 days. We're going to look into it. That's the same kind of crap with this Duffy. Where the hell is the money? You said you guarantee it. What the hell is the big story here? How come the prostitutes aren't calling them out? I'll tell you why. Because they're paid off. Or they're little wimps. That's why. And this whole country, is a, this is a metaphor for everything that's going on. Just like those kids sitting down there getting sprayed and not moving, it's the same thing, everybody there. Your money in the bank, they're going to rob it from you. Like they've done before, they're doing it now, and they're going to do it again. It is incredible. And finally, what the Chicago Sun-Times did do a little blurb admitting that they said it was guaranteed. Uh, they're going to destroy themselves and everybody else along with them. And you're right, a nation of sheep will be ruled by wolves. Uh, Gerald Salente, um, of course, uh, trendsresearch.com. I know you put out a special trend alert today, breaking all this down. How can people find out more? Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And remember, everyone out there, we know you're having a difficult time. If you, your finances are tight, just let us know. There's a discount request form. We want to prepare you for what's going to happen ahead. Because if you listen to the prostitutes to lead you, boy, it, 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 you, you better be ready for what's coming up in the new year. Because I've been in this business 30 years, Alex, and I've never been more worried than I am now. Yeah, you've been investing in those futures for, you said, since the 70s. And now the 78. 78. My first buy of gold was $187.50 an ounce. Unbelievable. They're definitely getting reckless, and, and their chutzpah is going to run well, I out. I want to mention this quickly, Alex, if we have time. This is not a gold bubble in my belief. As I mentioned, I've been buying gold since then. I went through the bubble of the 1980s. This is a very different time. Back then, there was no China. There was no Russia in the markets. There was the Soviet Union, and the Chinese was still had rickshaws. There was no globalization. There wasn't a meltdown all over Europe. There wasn't the euro. It's a whole different time. Everybody I know in Greece, in Italy, all the people that I know, they're all getting their money out of the bank, and a lot of them are buying gold. This isn't the bubble that they want you to believe it is, because they want you to buy into their cheap money, their paper money that isn't worth the So they can steal paper. it and devalue it and screw you 700 ways. You got it. Well, Gerald, at least we're here as a testament to who the real criminals are. And it's incredible you've been predicting they'd steal accounts, but <laughs> not, yeah. not your brokerage where you're trying to, but you've already paid for it. And then, and then they sent you a corrected statement. My, my God, it's unbelievable. Gerald Salente, uh, thank you so much. We'll continue to check in with you. Thanks for spending time with us. Hey, thank you. Wow, folks. I mean, it is, it is so incredible uh, to see this you know, continue. Uh, to unfold just absolutely makes my head spin. Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central. I want to thank all the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. You pay the way for the millions of people that watch this on YouTube and Blip TV and all the other bit torrents and systems that are out there. They're moving towards internet censorship right now and internet kill switches and talking about copyright this, that, shut down free speech. Uh, no due process. It's on. The crooks have done it all. And you notice they got the main Wall Street sharks always lobbying for middle class tax increases because they siphon it all off and steal it through bailouts and through government investments. 
and then they get all the tax incentives and tax breaks like Gerald mentioned. They're a bunch of crooks. It's called the New World Order, and it's the enemy. It's a new type of tyranny, and people better learn to recognize it. Every generation thinks they're fighting the last tyranny, Hitler, Stalin, Mao. No, it, it, it's come dressed up as a bunch of white shoe boys, as Gerald Salente has said. Again, Infowars.com is our website. TrendsResearch.com is their website. Be sure and check them both out because the system is scared to death. And we're taking a risk here going head up against these criminals because we know in the final equation, the greatest risk is not standing up to these bullies. You can also subscribe. Got a few days left of the 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the InfoWar. Great job, supporters, and great job to that crew out there. All right, folks, InfoWars Nightly News is over. But there was one question I forgot to ask the good doctor who's written the big uh, peer-reviewed white paper on psychopaths. And, uh, Doc, I wanted to ask you, uh, from your research, what percentage of high-level Fortune 500 leaders uh, are psychopaths if you had to dead reckon? Uh, the nearest estimate for, for co corporate leadership it seems to be around 3.5%. Um, so if, if it's 1% of the general population, it seems to go up to about 3%, 3.5%. But the evidence for that is, is relatively weak so far. We're still, people are still working on that around the world. Interesting. Uh, do, do you see the, the worm turning on this? I mean, do you see this as a, as a problem? Is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Uh, the, their exposure, is that helping? It doesn't seem to be getting better as far as I can see. I mean, it, the only way it's getting better is that the public is gradually becoming aware of this as a problem. Uh, and sooner or later there will be a call for screening of these people so that they don't get to the positions where they are now. Interesting. Dr. Uh, Clive Boddy, um, Professor, thank you so much. Good luck with the book. Well, folks, it's, it's kind of like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. At the end of the credits, there's a little something extra. We do that sometimes. Thanks to Gerald Salente, the crew, uh, the doc for joining us, everybody. We'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central.